All right. This is a video about art and DIY electronics by me, Garnet Hertz. This is a second video. Uh, I made one video that goes over the table of contents, and now I'm going to talk about chapter zero, an introduction to the DIY mindset. I start counting by zero typically, but you can blame that on computer programming. Okay, so an introduction to the DIY mindset. Now, this is an introduction to the book where I generally give an overview of um, the work and kind of perspectives on how I came to it. And I start by talking about how I grew up in good old Saskatchewan. Now, if anybody has ever, hasn't been to Saskatchewan, it's relatively flat, has lots of farmers, wheat fields, canola fields, cattle, junk piles, this sort of stuff. It has a lot of things, but those are the things that I highlight in it. Um, I grew up, spent time growing up in this little house here by this grain elevator, spent a lot of time as a kid playing in abandoned cars and junk piles and this kind of stuff now and this is a i don't know if you'd consider this a project of mine but it was something that i built with or that well actually my my dad and my uncle and my brothers mostly built this i just kind of was tagging along this time this is a go-kart that at one point had a, a lawnmower engine on the back here that propelled this thing forward uh, tricycle in the front uh, and it was sort of a dangerous uh, fun go-kart built out at the farm in Saskatchewan literally out of a junk pile um, and this really kind of had an influence on me because I took this kind of DIY approach to building all sorts of stuff and it made me quite skeptical of everything that I saw happening in terms of the internet especially uh, in the 90s. This is a, a machine, an early machine that I'd built called Interface from 1996. This is a uh, internet controlled drawing machine, a telerobot. Um, I talk about that and I, I talk about uh, festivals like ICEA, the International Symposium of Electronic Art, really a lot of ways it's like a DIY festival, or at least that's what I got out of it. First time I visited it in 1997. Um, to me, it was very similar to Maker Fair, or at least I, I liked seeing the people working on stuff kind of behind the scenes. Um, and I also talk about um, the origins of the Maker movement. Now, in 2003, I'd moved to Southern California. A guy I knew, Doug Rapetto, and somebody else I knew, Karen Marcello, they both had these groups called Dorkbot around Y2K. And when I moved to California in 2003 to go to grad school with um, Simon Penny, uh, and there was Tom Jennings there and other people, um, I started up that same organization in LA. Now, um, Karen Marcello was doing the same thing in the Bay Area. And we really saw the Make magazine uh, forming, uh, or, or Dale Daughtery would go to the event in the Bay Area that my friend Karen from SRL was running. Um, and Mark Fraunfelder from Boing Boing and Make Magazine and stuff like this, or before Make Magazine was even launched, came to my events. I put forward an argument here that that the maker movement wouldn't have really happened if it wasn't for Dorkbot. Um, or at least I see that that was a major thing. So I, I, I talk a bit about that. Um, and I, I another thing that I kind of explain in this introduction is that I try to skip I, I, I blur um, distinctions between artists and designers on purpose. I also 
try to skip over and not use uh, kind of foundational or seminal uh, published works on uh, contemporary art. Clement Greenberg, Rosalind Krauss, Roland Bart, Meyer Shapiro, other art, art historians. Instead of that approach, I've tried to use um, literature from science and technology studies more to explain this work uh, because I see it as technological innovation as much as anything else. Um, then I just talk about how I lay out the chapters and I end by inviting people to send me work, to send me photos of their stuff and I'll send them something back. So that's it for that chapter of the beginnings, chapter zero for art and DIY electronics.